So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. We have yet another phenomenal, incredible, tremendous, and stupendous guest coming on very, very soon. It's the one and only Dr. Barrett Matthews. He is an amazing, amazing young man that, you know, talking to this guy, we struck up what I call an instant friendship. He's just got great values. Uh, he's an amazing man. He's full of integrity. And I can't wait to share his brilliance with you. And that's coming up very, very soon. But first, the Mind Body Business Show. What is that all about? Is a, It's a show that I had developed with you in mind, the, the budding entrepreneur, the, the business person, the person looking to get to the next level, wherever you may be right now. Even if you are super uber successful, there's always something else to learn. And I know, I know in my heart of hearts, you will learn something from Dr. Barrett Matthews tonight. There's no doubt in my mind. And the Mind Body Business Show, the name is actually derived from what I found out after basically studying only successful people for about a decade. And what I found is to a person, these successful individuals had these three things that kept bubbling up to the top and in common. And those were the three words that epitomize the name of the show. Mind is all about mindset. And so to a person, each and every one of these successful individuals that I studied had a very powerful, positive, but most importantly, flexible mindset. And then body, body literally means that they take care of themselves and took care of themselves both physically and nutritionally. And that's an amazing thing. The mind and body are a team. More importantly, the mind and body are your team. And so once you have both of those in order, now you can excel at the third pillar of success, and that is business. And what is that? Well, to succeed in business, one must acquire and develop skill sets and become a master in certain skill sets to literally grow and scale a business successfully. Skill sets like marketing, sales, team building, systematizing, leadership. I mean, I could keep going for quite some time. That's a lot <laughs> already. And you're thinking, wow, do I have to master all of those? Well, the good news is you personally do not need to master every single one of those. No, no, no. In fact, if you master just one of them, and it was one of the four or five I just mentioned, then you can use it to leverage, to pull in others that have those skill sets, that have mastered those skill sets that you have yet to or may never master just because of the sheer time it takes to master any one skill. And that one skill set, if you're curious, I don't know, are you curious? If anybody want to know, you can put it in the chat, say, I want to know, or I'll just move on. I'm kidding. I'm going to tell you. I don't play those games. That one skill set is the skill set of leadership. Yes. And you could say, Brian, I don't have anybody on my team yet. That's okay. Master leading yourself first. Always, always master leading yourself. Discipline. How do you organize yourself? Do you put a calendar together? Master the skill set of leadership. You do not even have to have a team in order to do it. Then when you have a first employee, VA, et cetera, it'll come much naturally and easier if you've already mastered leading yourself. So there you go. That's it. That's our show. We just gave away all the tips that you need to become successful. I'm so kidding. We have so much more to bring up here. Dr. Barrett Matthews is waiting in the wings. He is chomping at the bit. And another beautiful thing I found out about very successful people is that to a person, they were also very avid readers of books. And we just happen to have a multi-book author in the house here tonight. Yeah, he's coming on soon. And with that, I'd like to segue very quickly into a little segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks. Born to read. Bookmarks. Ready. Steady. Read. Bookmarks. Brought to you by ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. Yes, ReachYourPeakLibrary.com. Write that down. 
Why don't I say write that down? Because I would hate for you to start going off and looking at resources as especially when Dr. Barrett Matthews comes on, he's going to be giving you some resources that you can take advantage of rather than clicking away and taking your focus away from what he is saying. Stay with us, write it down and then visit it after the show is over. Why? Because the magic happens in the room and I'd really hate for you to have your focus somewhere else and miss that one golden nugget that Dr. Barrett Matthews is about to say, because you are off focused on something else, write it down, be done with it, keep your gaze and listen to him. And that's my advice for going forward on this show. And basically in any kind of event that you ever attend is to take notes and stay focused on whoever is speaking because you never know when that one golden nugget is gonna come your way. So that is my soapbox moment and I am now stepping down from there. <laughs> ReachYourPeakLibrary.com is a website that I had developed. My team put it together specifically with you in mind. And the reason is because I myself was not an avid reader until about the age of 47. And that's about 11 years ago. So I know you're all doing the math. And uh, I found out that it was simply because I did not like reading with my eyeballs. I'd get either eye strain or I just couldn't keep my attention long enough to get through a book. And then I found this magical app called audible oh my goodness then that was it i said oh i love listening to books i can't stand reading them on a you know page you know page to page to page turning them but i sure love listening to them so i start started reading avidly by listening to books and every book you see on this screen at reachyourpeaklibrary.com is a book that i have personally read and that i vet meaning that it had profound effect either on me personally or in business or both and that's why they're here so you can just go in and pick up a book and have higher odds of it having impact on you than if you were just to pick one out uh, by doing a random search, say on Amazon. And this is not here to make money. If you see a book and you have a, a go-to place you like to go purchase your, your reading material, go there. Just take the title with you, know what the book is, and go get it and start reading or, or begin, continue reading that next great book. Just pick the first one that jumps off the screen. They're not in, in any order whatsoever, uh, not alphabetic, uh, not at all. So just look through, find the first one that jumps off the page and go get it and start changing your life because that's what I found out it did for me. Unbelievably, a simple way to, to change your life, very inexpensive way to change your life. It's all about knowing the right books to read. And this is a resource that will help you there. All right, speaking of resources that will help you in every way you can imagine, we've got the best resource on the planet who is going to appear right now. Let's bring him on. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen. It is the one, it is the only Dr. Barrett Matthews. Thank you. Good to be here, man. Oh, this has been a while coming. I know that there was a bit of a line uh, getting on the show, but I'm so glad you're here. Uh, you're, you're just a wonderful guy. I, I feel like you've been a friend forever. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. way. We're already getting uh, some great tid tidbits here. I, uh, haha, you accidentally gave me a Chris, uh, Christmas gift idea. That's good. Lorianne Hood, she likes to join us. I think she says she's from South Carolina, if I got that wrong. Uh, correct me, Lori. Was it an accident? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So uh, real quick, before we dive all the way in, I've got a little bit of housekeeping to take care of there, Sir Matthews. And so I'm going to call you lots of fun names here. <laughs> Director Matthews, Sir. Uh, we'll, have some, wow. we'll have some good time. Yeah, I'm gonna, I got a little sword over here somewhere. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, the big insider secrets. You can see that that nice red and white stamp over Dr. Barrett Matthews' left shoulder right there. And, and look, if you can't see that, that means you're not watching us uh, either on video or it means you're not watching us live. And you really want to watch us live. Why? Because for those of you who are watching live, you will get the opportunity to win a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. And yes, that's all compliments of the TheBigInsiderSecrets.com. That is my buddy, Jason Nast, who made that available to us to do this every single show. So if you're not watching live, be sure. If you're listening on a podcast, that's great. Glad to have you. Go to the Mind Body Business Show. 
mindbodybusinessshow.com. It's a lot. That's why I said it slowly. The mindbodybusinessshow.com. And you'll see lots of buttons there that says uh, where and when to watch. Click any one of them. Register. And you'll also get a nice hotel discount card just for registering to receive only automated uh, notifications when we air live. So that you won't forget and you can jump on. You can opt out anytime. You can just get the hotel discount card and opt out. I hope you don't, but it, you certainly can. And we will honor that. So theBigInsiderSecrets.com. you definitely want to stay on to the end so that you can enter to win that amazing thing. A couple more and we're going to get going with this amazing gentleman over here. Yes. So if you are struggling with putting on a live show together and maybe it's overwhelming and you want a lot of the processes done for you. Man, I'm, I'm hearing this more and more from everybody I run into. But while still enabling you to put on a high quality show and connect with great people like Dr. Barrett Matthews and grow your business all at the same time, then write this down, carpetbombmarketing.com. Then head on over to it after the conclusion of tonight's show. Carpet Bomb Marketing, saturate the marketplace with your message. And you can also get a free lifetime membership to the Reach Your Peak Club. What is that? Well, with your free membership, that will include instant access to deep discounts on major software services and top shelf training courses you need to run your successful business. You can think of it as kind of your entrepreneur discount house. So catapult your business to the next level and you can sign up for free now. Well, do this afterward, write this down. But when you do, you will also get another hotel discount card with worth over $200 and that's just for joining. So, and then once you've joined, you can then go grab your, your great deep discount. So write this down after the show, head on over to reachyourpeakclub.com. Again, that's reachyourpeakclub.com. Let's bring back the man, the myth, the legend. Dr. Barrett Matthews is in the house smiling. I love this guy. And we're going to have a great time. And I love to open up every show, Sir Matthews, with a... Uh, <laughs> this guy. With, <laughs> with, with really something that goes with the first word of this show, the mind. And, you know, being an entrepreneur as you are in business for yourself, you understand what it takes. A lot of people who have not gone down this path really don't know how much time, effort, energy fortitude persistence everything that goes into it i mean unbelievable amount and so i'm curious uh I, I love asking this question because it gives me a great idea how each individual truly achieves success in my humble opinion it all starts up between our own two ears mm -hmm. uh, and i think that anyone's either level of success or lack thereof is 100 percent up to them and what's going on inside their brain and so i like to find out um there there's another different way of saying it is if um, when you get up in the morning and you know that, you know, being an entrepreneur, there's every day, there's something, there's challenges to overcome, hurdles, setbacks to uh, come back from. When you get up in the morning, what is it that's going on in your beautiful brain that is keeping you driven day in and day out and you're just going to keep going no matter what? What is that one thing that drives you so hard to become so successful? Well, uh, good question, Brian. I wake up every morning grateful. First of all, gratitude Oof. is the one thing because I'm I'm just glad that God gave me another day. Especially, you know, we've been dealing with the pandemic the last few years and lost some people in our lives. And I just said, you know what? I I am more and more grateful that I am alive, and I can't take that for granted. So when I wake up, first thing I do is I, I pray. I give thanks because I just know that I don't have to be here. And then I realized, you know, I, I God gave me some gifts and it, they weren't for me to keep a secret. So I have mm. to get up and do something about it to make sure that I share them with the world to the best of my ability. And, you know, I, I always feel like I'm falling short of it because I can never you know, truly maximize with everything that he's given me. But I'm grateful for it. So I get up in the morning just, you know, just grateful. And I just try to just put my work out there to help help somebody because I know that somebody out there needs what I have to offer. I don't necessarily know who they are when I wake up in the morning, but I know that someone does and it's just up to me to get out there. So that's what motivates me in the morning. I, I just so love, my God, I love what I get to do with this show. And there are so many amazing people like you that I interviewed that have this servant attitude. You said, help them or help others i don't know how many times just then 
And that, yeah. that just is so evident of where your focus is. It's on helping others, not mm -hmm. on, you did not once, not for a moment say, it's so I can make more money and be happier. And that's that's so it telling. Yeah, and it's cool because I, it, I just like to hammer it home a little more for those that might think that being an entrepreneur is all, all money centric. It's any, it's nothing could be farther from the truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do it to make a living and we yeah, do need to make money. Let's not be uh, coding that and taking that out of the <laughs> equation. But the primary focus though, is always serving others because we know that that results in income coming down. You know, ultimately that's what happens. Yeah. And the more people you help and serve, the more money you'll make. And th that's a good thing because people like you, Dr. Barrett Matthews, can use that money to scale your business and help even more even people. More people. That's You're the beautiful right. thing. I just like to give everyone the secret right up the front. It's not it's not how to make more money. It's how to serve more people. And it that's is. that's the golden juice right there. We're done. The show's over. Drop, drop yeah. the mic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, night, Mary. Everyone. How you doing, Mary? Yeah. So um, I appreciate that about you. And I think that's why I, I feel so close to you as a friend in mm -hmm. such a short period of time. Uh, so too. Because you just have this golden value system. And, you know, you're you're just absolutely 100 percent perfect, right? You have no. <laughs> <laughs> On what scale is that? <laughs> <laughs> but don't you don't you often see uh, you know others will look at you and say, well, you have more success than I do, so you must have figured something out and everything works smoothly for you. I mean, do you ever get that sense when people come to you and say, how do you make it look so easy? How do you how do you <laughs> achieve so much? Is that ever, I mean, it it took I, a. I, I 10 years to become an overnight success, so, right? I had a friend years ago, she said to me, you're the only person I know that never has any problems. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I said, I have just as many as you. I just don't wear them on my sleeve. And Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I don't, you know, it's not, it's not for everybody to see. But the thing is, I look at it, I, and I don't focus on my problems. I focus on the solution. Because, mm. you know, whatever you concentrate on is going to grow. So... I have just as many as anyone else that, you know, is, uh, what's the, uh, the, the rapper thing, Jay-Z says, no, more money, more problems. So, you yeah. know, I mean, you could, every, everyone has them. It's just that how you deal with them is going to, going to affect everything. Someone told me a long time ago, adversity is inevitable, but stress is optional. And I choose not to stress on it. Now, don't get me wrong. Things are going to hit you, but it's your recovery time. How long mm. are you going to let it linger? And, and are you going to let it get inside? Because stress is what you let get inside. And I just choose not to let those things get inside and affect me to, to the point where I just can't function. They're, they're going to hit you. But how are you going to react to it? How are you going to function from that point? Because, But no, I'm not perfect, but in any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> I have just as many things going on as you do. So you just have to deal with how you're going to deal with them. And I'm so I'm so glad you elaborated on all that because that truly is it comes down to the mindset of one you know what did you did you were you born like that were you born to say I just got to get over it and think about the solutions or did this something that you refined over time and realized hey this is a, a lot funner better way to live than than just continually you know, wallowing in the stress and the crap that some, goes on some of it some of it I, I get from my father my father's a very low key person doesn't let a lot of things get to him but. Right. Then again, I had some things come from my mother where she, my mother will stress, stress <laughs> on him just about everything. And then uh, back in the early 90s, I was with a network marketing organization and my upline, she was a tough lady. I've seen her make Marines quit. She was, <laughs> she was I'm serious. She was very, very tough. Wow. And she, and, but through her training, I developed a certain mentality and certain way of dealing with things. I remember specifically, there was a time where I got a flat tire and I changed my tire, but I still let it bother me the rest of the day. I was just so mad about it, holding me up and everything. Now I get a flat tire, change the tire, it's gone. It's over. I'm done. Yeah. Move on. And, and it's just a, a mindset. I, I had to just have my have my recovery time, just get over it and move forward. Yeah. And I, that's the one thing I wanted to help to illustrate. And you did it perfectly to everyone is that there is hope. If, if you are one of those that tends to stay in the moment of a negative moment, then there's hope because it is a learn trait. I learned it myself. I also grew up with one somewhat negative, uh, I wouldn't say a person, but overall emotionally negative uh, yeah. when, when events happened. And the other one was just kind of middle of the road and 
just kind of went along with the other spouse. So you can probably figure right. out which one was a man and which was a woman, but it doesn't matter. Um, but you, you said <laughs> something, Brian, and it reminded me of something a friend of mine said, uh, Dr. Ruben West. He he said, Ooh. and this is for anybody listening on, on this same topic, there's no such thing as a bad day. There are only bad moments. Mm-hmm. Amen. I mean, that is absolutely when someone can internalize that who hasn't yet, then watch your life change for the better forever. I mean, I had a mentor that I don't know if he coined this phrase, but mm -hmm. I used it from stage many times, uh, both on his stage as his lead trainer for two years and then on my own. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, you can either let circumstances control your attitude Ooh. or you can let your attitude dictate your circumstances. And that was such a powerful phrase when it was like, bam, I love that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Now, someone, so true. I, someone got real spiritual with me on it one time. He said, who are we to say what's good or what's bad in our life? Ooh. Right. Ooh. <laughs> right. You know, because it's not our plan to begin with. So how do we get to say what's good and what's bad? It's, it's just, it just it. is. <laughs> that's, that's deep. That's good. Right, though. right, right. That's <laughs> <laughs> Holy smokes. So I wanted to kind of... Um, well, first of all, you know, I did not properly introduce you, so I want to do that right now. So I want un people to understand properly. what kind of you amazing. Said, sir, I mean, I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> I just want people to know what kind of amazing person you are and what yeah. you do, and I want them to realize what you do, so that if there's a fit, they can reach out to you after the show's over, and you guys can collaborate and see if there's a fit together. So here we go. Doctor Barrett Matthews has been involved in media since the 1980s. I was in high school back then, man. He served and <laughs> as an assistant director, nah, not the whole 80s. Uh, he served as an assistant director for WUSA TV, a production assistant for CBS Sports. He has some really good stories there. Working alongside Brent Musburger and James Brown. So we're not talking about the singer James Brown, I don't think. We're talking about, I know who it is, the, the sportscaster. <laughs> and I love him. He's still going to this day. Mm-hmm. I think Musburger might be doing it a little bit too. He, uh, yeah, he, well, he just resigned from the Raiders. He was doing the Raiders games. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, to continue, Dr. Barrett Matthews has directed, produced, and hosted several radio shows and podcasts, and he's authored several books. He is the media optimization professional himself. He is the one, the only Dr. Barrett Matthews. There's so much more to this amazing guy. And we're gonna we're gonna peel back that onion even more so you can get an understanding of what he has found in his his wheelhouse. He's an expert at, and that he can help you to get out there to get more exposure through media, through podcasting, through lots of different mediums. Because he's been there, and done that. Uh, he's one of those few that is in this space that had been in the space long, a long time in various forms, in different formats, television, radio and the like. So you bring with you so much knowledge and experience. I think that's what really sets you apart from so many of the others out there, including yours truly, that are offering services like that. So it's just a, a joy to have you on, brother. Man, it's good to be here. You know, you know anything for you, man. Ah, <laughs> I'm telling you. And I, I paid him like 200 bucks to come on the show just so everybody knows. No, I didn't. <laughs> Oh, Hold on, I got shorted. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, my gosh, so many questions I'd like to ask you. One of the things, if if you don't mind, this could, will kind of set the table so people get a better in-depth uh, look at what you do. Mm -hmm. If you wouldn't mind, can you explain what it is, your services currently today, what your company provides? You know, uh, who is your client, um, your, your ideal client? So okay. is it? Is it an individual? Is it a man or is it a woman? Is it a corporation? Is it some of, of all the above? I got stuff floating. Or what what is that? And then also, this is a three-parter. I hope you can remember it all because I'm having trouble just trying to ask it. Uh, the third part is uh, if you have a success story or two you'd like to share. I love stories. I think everybody loves stories. And feel free to do that as well. But yeah, tell us what you do, uh, who your, your client base is, and maybe a success story or two if you don't mind. Okay. So, Yeah. Uh, what I do is, I'm, like I guess I'm a media optimization professional. What I do is I help you. If you're a speaker, if you're an author, if you're a coach, if you're somebody who's looking for a wider audience, then I help you to drive your competitors crazy. Because what I do is I use media to help you to reach people. Understand that people consume their information through one form of media or another. 
you can ask Brian. And what I do is I make sure that you are on every form of media. If you don't have a book, I help you get a book. If you don't have a podcast, I help you get a podcast. If you don't have a, a Roku channel, I help you get a Roku channel. If you don't have social media working, I help you get social media working. If you don't have a documentary film on your business, I help you do all of those. And I don't want you doing one or the other. I want you doing all of them. Because if you can be everywhere all at once, not only don't you miss your audience, but they don't miss you either. I always use the example of, of the comedian Kevin Hart. You may not think Kevin Hart's funny, but you're not going to ignore him because he's everywhere. And I, I say, why aren't you everywhere? So the, the goal is to get you everywhere. Now, as far as uh, some success stories, uh, I have some people I'm working with right now who are, are actually, they're twin brothers. They have a, a, a podcast that I'm working with. They were speakers. They're just speakers, but I got them doing a podcast. We're working on some streaming television and actually a, um, a a documentary film for them too. We're going to be working on that as well. So these are the things that's to get them more exposure, to get them out there so that they don't miss anyone. I always say that there are two paradigms that I like to break from people. One is that you should focus on one area of marketing and drill down on that area and that's where you should be. And when I when you do that, you're missing all the other areas that you can do. And so that's why I say, don't do that. The other thing people say is that you should just find out who your ideal client, your avatar, and go to where they are. And I say, that's wrong. You should find out who they are and then put yourself everywhere because guess what? They consume their media differently than the next person. That doesn't mean they're not your client. They just consume their information differently. Stop focusing on what makes you comfortable and focus on where they are, what makes them comfortable. And that's what I do is I help you to make sure your media is everywhere so people can see you. Oh, man. Did I that answer? Was, that was a phenomenally disruptive explanation. And I love that. I mean that in a great way. Disruptive because it goes against the grain of how we've all heard. And you've said it. Yeah. You know, this is how, what we are told to do is focus on one area of marketing. So we have so much in common. I mean, <laughs> even more. It's so great that uh, there was a prominent. I'm not going to. I'm not going to name names. It's not a bad thing. It's just there was an individual that actually runs a high end uh, service, a studio service for live oh. streaming. And this gentleman, uh, their service would let you stream to multiple platforms. Their opinion, his opinion was, don't do it to too many. You don't want to. I've don't heard that the before. Network. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, what? You're, you're going against the very thing your platform provides. That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. I, and I was, I'm just like you. I said, no, you hit everything you can and everywhere you can with all you've you got. You don't know where they are. You don't know who's Give looking them. for you. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what we do. We're like on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, yeah. Twitter. Uh, I, just love, I love what you're doing, man. Because, I mean, that's the way to do Because you don't know where these people are that want to pay you. <laughs> that's the thing. They want to be your client. But exactly. if they don't, if you don't, I I think most people do what I call, Brian, ego-based marketing. Mm. We market in a way that makes us comfortable. And we don't focus on what those people want. If they, if someone wants to find out about you through Roku, then you need to be on Roku. If someone wants to find out about you in a book, then you need to have a book. Because you need to be where they're looking. I, I always say McDonald's doesn't come knocking on your door saying, hey, come buy a Big Mac. McDonald's makes it so that when you need to find them, that you can find them. They're, they're everywhere. <laughs> right. So they need to make sure they want you to be able to find them. They're always close to your neighborhood. And that's the thing that you need to be. You need to be where your people can find you wherever they're looking. Yes. Yes. And, and then I like to add a little sprinkle, a little uh, sauce on top of that or a spice to say that, you know, it's great to be everywhere. It's also very important, and I know you're going to uh, resonate with this, is, is to do so in a professional and high-quality manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't want to have some third-grade little uh, you know, podcast where you're using your phone as, uh -huh. uh, sorry for those that are, but get, get past it, get high-quality, get high-grade mics. The only one who can get away with that was Russell Brunson, but, but he was already a <laughs> multimillionaire when he did it. Yeah, so if you're already an influencer, <laughs> if you're already an influencer that, that, that's a different story for sure. Yeah. But yeah, just be sure because here's what happens. I love this because I always say my show is not my business. This show is not my business and it's not. 
I bring incredible people like you, but what happens is when that time comes where I solve a pain point for someone that I'm talking to, or for the first time they've ever heard of me, what are they going to do? They're going to research me. Yeah. And when they do, they cannot not find me. That's the whole purpose That's of what it. Dr. That's Barrett it. Matthews is talking about right here. Yeah. That's you want to be un unfindable. Is that right? <laughs> I like that. I'm, I'm using that, by the way. <laughs> Un unfindable. Hey, you remember the Uncola 7-Up? That was awesome. Yes, 7-Up the cool. Uncola. <laughs> and see, that was good branding because we're still talking about uh, it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Oh, my goodness. We got more comments flying in. I have a green screen. Yeah, so, yeah. We'll, we'll have a talk on that, Mary, after the fact. Um, I used to do green screen, too, but um, highly recommend against it. And we can go into details about that at a later time. Uh, you can tell Dr. Barrett Matthews has a natural background. It's uh, yeah. Let's just let's just leave that where it is for now. Um, as you're going through your your walk of entrepreneurship, I, I just know you've never ever had a problem or made a mistake the entire time, right? Well, you know, <laughs> I, I was wrong once. <laughs> but then I found out I was mistaken about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> and the the thing about it is, is look, uh, a lot of people. I was this way. I was so deathly afraid of not being perfect, of not getting it right, everything right the first time. And if I didn't, I would beat myself up to the point where I would just freeze and stop and say, oh, "I'm yeah. a failure." And the, the opposite it could be couldn't be any more than true. Is that you want to fail and fail fast and fail often so that you can get past all those. But the key is. What's the what's the key behind all the failure? What should we do every time we make a mistake? What should we do about that mistake from that mistake? Learn, Learn from it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then so you don't make it again. But the more mistakes you make up front, now you have more of knowledge of what to do the correct way. And so for you, if you can think of maybe just one that that really sent home a message to you that gave you a lesson that really catapulted you from that day forward. Can you think of one wrong turn or mistake that may have occurred in your entrepreneurial life that really had an impact on you when you learned about it and how to, how to adjust your behavior or circumstance? Oh God, there's so many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm making mistakes today. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I, I guess the biggest mistake that I, probably made was not embracing entrepreneurship earlier and not at a, at a more serious level. I mean, there was a period in my life where I was jumping into entrepreneurship, but I was still looking for that job. And in, instead of just jumping into entrepreneurship and saying, you know, this is where I'm going to go because right, like right now I'm, I'm unemployable. So <laughs> I couldn't yeah. even apply for a job if I wanted to, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that, at first, because I've been keep in mind, I was raised with people who worked government jobs and were told either my family was either government or a school teacher. And I didn't want to do either. <laughs> I knew I knew that God put me here to do something different. I just knew it. I didn't know what, but I knew that I was supposed to be some do something different. So my mind was already different, but I had but there was still my training I had to go against. So it was it was a battle between the two. And even to this day, my mother still doesn't understand that I'm an entrepreneur. I can go over there and she'll go, oh, you're off today? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, but the, the thing is, I, I think if, if I had jumped in sooner and embraced it, I may even be further along. And, but I, and I tell everybody this, learn the art of selling. Learn the art of selling, because that's something that I, I had to learn later. I, could, I wish I'd learned it earlier. Don't get me wrong, I've sold things before, but there's a there's an art to being good at selling and it's something you can learn though it's yeah. something you can learn so don't don't think and, and i can tell you something real funny i always tell the people when i hear someone say because i'm sure someone in your audience has said this phrase oh i hate sales and i always say you're lying there's not a single person who made a sale that said i hated that <laughs> when you make a sale you feel very good so you don't hate sales you hate the rejection. So that's it. you need to learn how to sell. That's all it is. So, but yeah, and that's one thing I wish I had learned that earlier as well. And and it's it's true that every person on the planet is already deep into sales. We're selling our spouse on what we're gonna eat that night or mm -hmm. we're gonna go restaurant. Uh and and 
if you're like me, you probably don't make the sale very often, but at least you're learning. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> and, and the other thing, though, someone pointed this out to me. Everything you have, everything you see in front of you was bought and sold by somebody. Yeah. Oh, God, good one. Yes. Yeah, and <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. People aren't, they don't hate sales. They hate rejection, which is part of the process of sales. And why is that so hurtful? Why do they not like that? What do you think that is? Is it possible that maybe their ego is getting in the way just a little bit? Oh, you went there. But <laughs> you know, well, you, you brought up a great point. And thank you, Mary, for the compliment. Um, one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Myron Golden, he taught me this. And it, it took a while for it to sink in. But once it did, it changed my life. And he said, don't get attached to the outcome. Hmm. And that was it, it took a while for me because we always get attached as to whether someone says yes or no to whatever we're offering. And when you don't get attached to the outcome, your job is not to. So what do they buy? What do they don't? Don't worry about it. That's not your job. Your job is to make the offer in the best way possible to them. Because if you going back to what we talked about earlier, if you're truly there to serve them. If you're truly there to serve them, your job is to make the offer to serve them. Of course, there is a fee attached to it, but your job is to offer the service. Whether they take it or not is not up to you. And so you go ahead and just do it, make the offer. I, I went to a conference years ago and I set my mind that I'm not going to get attached to the outcome. And I made more sales that year than I ever had before. Yeah, it's, it's a liberating uh, concept for sure. And I embrace that as well. Uh, just been going back and forth with an individual recently, and uh, we're in the process of that offer, right? And they're already exciting, excited beyond the moon, and they're going to take up, take me up on the offer eventually. But I'm not rushing them. Yeah, and I, exactly. I tell them as many questions as you have for as long as you have. I've already, I've already vetted the individual. I already know they're not going to take this and run forever and try to extract free time out of me. I, I've already got that done. I just know that. I'm there for that person to make sure they are 100% comfortable with their decision going forward. And then once they make the decision, they're going to be more than comfortable because I'm going to over deliver and take care of them. Like you said, not so worried about that outcome, hitting right. that sale, getting that pay, that payday. Uh, I've seen so many people crash and burn that are money centric that way. And I finally, just recently, uh, Barrett, I mean, it hasn't been long ago that I, it finally hit me what my true essence was and what I feel good about. And it's this approach where I don't worry about, you know, we're taught to go up for the sale, right? Always be selling, always be selling. And people translate into, into always be transacting, right? Right. Well, right. Always making the transaction, but that's not, that's not what that's not really, really truly, it. yeah. yeah, it does. Can it work? You know, if you're an aggressive car salesperson, well, yeah, and it yeah, does work. Yeah. But at the end of the day, are you serving anybody other than yourself and your wallet? I mean, not really. And, and if you're not, and that's how you want to, to live your life, that's completely their choice, right? Um, and it, and it, and it, it, it's a great thing with like not getting attached to it. It frees you. Yes. It, 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 really, it really frees you. And also when a person, when a consumer realizes that you're not pressed that they buy from you, they get more interested in buying because now they're like, wow, they don't need me to do this. Yeah, he's now, not even. He's, I want this more. I mean, it's almost yeah. kind of like the interaction of a male and a female. You know, <laughs> when one doesn't seem to care, the other one seems to be interested more. Yeah, it's like, hey, you're not desperate. You're, you're. Uh, I'm attracted to your offer now. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, that's I mean, that, that's crazy. But it is. That's how it, it works. It's also attracting from the standpoint that you aren't pressing them up against the wall and pressuring them. No one likes to be pressured mm -hmm. into. I mean, there's a difference between pressuring someone and convincing them that this is good for them and they should make that decision going forward. And, and see, someone told me that most people are don't like to be convinced because that's the problem, but they don't mind being persuaded. Yeah, you give them enough information to where they're convincing them, their, themselves. And that's exactly. where part of the art of sales comes in, doing it with integrity like you would. That's I know that. Yeah. Uh, because you can always take anything we're telling you and take it down the wrong path and come out the end going, this didn't work. You guys steer the wrong way. It's like, no, you got everything, every step of the way. Yeah, because I, mean, I know integrity. I've done this and I know you, I've told people, I said, no, this may not be for you. Yep. And I don't have a problem doing that because they it don't. may not be for them. I don't want to put someone in a bad position. And it goes two ways. 
I'm glad you brought that up because it could be that client is not a fit for you. Ooh. And it's somebody you don't want to work Ooh. with because they can end up being a literal cancer to your business with all their problems and issues. And I can't do this and I'm not going to do that. And you give excuses and point the finger back yeah. at you. It's like, no, that's why you really need to vet every client you really and, do. You really uh, before do. you bring it on. If it's long term, if it's if it's just a one time sale, even they'll come back and, yeah. and crush yeah. your support department. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, I've seen people you know, high ticket items. They put people through a, a week long training they, about how to use everything that they gave them. The yeah. Person went, the person went home, never used it. A year later, they come back and they don't remember how to use it. And they're mad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that that's another thank you. I mean, gosh, you're it's like you're interviewing me. This is pretty awesome, but <laughs> you're bringing up so many great points. It's like, you know, a lot of people think that it's just we're going to give them this this wafer, this golden wafer. They put it under their tongue and oh my god, <laughs> everything works now. Well, we're here to primarily when it the way it works is experts like Dr. Barrett Matthews guide you. But you still have to put in the time and effort and work, or you're not going to grow. If you don't grow, what what's the point? Yeah, because we're going to work for you. You're definitely not paying us enough. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's basically Dr. Barrett Matthews giving you the recipe and him coaching you along the way, being there to support you. But you got to put in the time and effort, or yeah. you know, it, it's it's nothing as automatic. Uh, <laughs> Unless you win the lottery, you'll probably self-sabotage and throw it all away anyway. Yeah, but. I mean, you're not <laughs> asking me to give you the recipe and cook dinner every day. <laughs> <laughs> I might. Depends. Are you a good cook? I, I am. I'm, we can talk terms later. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, uh, this is great. This is great. Oh, goodness. I'm so glad. This is like, you know, we've talked several times offline and yeah. <laughs> we never went this deep into these kind of topics. And it's just the telling of, of why I feel so strongly about mm -hmm. you being a, a good friend. It's yeah, just too, phenomenal. Buddy. My gosh, this is, this is it's just enjoyable. So you talked about your, your mom <laughs> mm -hmm. and, Oh, you're off today. I get that. It's funny. Um, <laughs> so you this just died be, last week. I mean, this, <laughs> <laughs> this may be the answer to the question might be that, but uh, that I'm about to ask you. <laughs> but so you've have you worked in corporate before in any kind of job situation? Where you yeah. Um, well, as you as you said in my in my intro, I worked for WSA TV. That okay. was my uh, first full time job out of college. Uh, I, and I, I tell people. I've never had a full-time job more than a year. <laughs> I worked there a year. Then I moved to CBS Sports. I was at CBS Sports for six to nine months. Ever since then, I was either in a network marketing, which is still working for yourself, or I, I may have I picked up a part-time job, worked for a few months there. But after that, I, I've never worked a full-time job, like you know W-2, for more than a year. So being an entrepreneur is not simple it's not easy and it's Ooh, definitely not for, of heart it's, yes yeah, that's exactly how i say it all the time yes <laughs> and it's definitely not for everyone for sure no, no. But what, and, what would here's you the thing, though. i i believe that everybody can be an entrepreneur but not everybody should Ooh, boom another mic drop that was good <laughs> well, yeah. okay <laughs> i can tell you've been uh hanging around dr ruben west for a while that guy uh, <laughs> had he just show. texted me today <laughs> I love him. He, he's like, wow, what a phenomenal speaker that guy yeah, is. Yeah, he is. And, he, and a phenomenal you know, individual. I, I tell people he was a speaker's coach. He's no longer a speaker coach because he's he's literally a world leader now. He's going all around the world. That's true. Yeah. And, and real quick, um, you know, they had the elections in Kenya recently for, uh, for president of Kenya. He helped because he's working on teaching civ civility over there. He's working with a lot of the leaders and they had first election in a long time where there was no violence and he helped along with that nice yeah. funny story though he said he was actually in dubai when the election happened he said i wasn't sure if what i taught them was going to take so i wasn't going to be there <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yeah he's, he's also very smart as we just yeah, right, yeah very smart as well <laughs> Yeah, I've I've been following him, and he he's been traveling to Kenya back and forth, and, mm -hmm. and doing lots of great stuff for community. Good guy. So, great, very good guy. Oh God, I just I so thoroughly enjoyed uh, chatting with him. He's the one who introduced me to Les Brown, and oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's very tight with Les. Yeah, yeah. 
amazing, amazing guy. Um, my goodness, there were so many things that we just talked about. Uh, it's funny you say don't get attached to the outcome. I'm curious because um, one of the things it's a diff it's all it's a total different thing though because uh, my mentor would teach us to always move forward with the outcome in mind. It mm. wasn't like focusing on it, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. A great example is I used to go to all these seminars. I mean, I was a seminar junkie. No kidding. I've got lanyards that will make Mr. T blush. <laughs> I mean, oh, and I, I literally, oh, I literally yeah. would wear them on stage. At one point, I'd have a, a crew member bring them up, put them on, and have a picture of Mr. T with his gold chains. And these are thicker and bigger. And and the, the theme of it was just show up. That's good. That's good. Just, just show up. But yeah, and so seminars are phenomenal. I can't remember where I was going with all this. What were we just talking about? Oh, outcome. So I was going to all of these seminars just time and time and time again, and I loved it. And I loved mm -hmm. the people. I loved the people more than anything. The attendees. It was like being a family. One time, I was at a, a, a I was at a, a gentleman's seminar, and it, I had I had witnessed him several times in the past. Liked it, and I got a text from my mentor. And he says, hey, man, what are you doing? He knew what I was doing because I was posting it on Facebook. So I'm like, uh, well, I'm over at this event, blah, blah, blah. And he says, and he said one word. That's all I needed. He said, why? And I thought, oh, the outcome. I didn't have one. I'm just here. So it doesn't matter what your outcome is, but have one. And this is the teaching. Exactly, we would go through. Exactly. It's like, OK, now it's to meet the main speaker. If it happens or not, doesn't really matter. But oftentimes it does happen. When yeah, you, no, I you agree with the you. outcome mentally. So it's a different kind of outcome than I you mean, were talking about. I, I look at it from like a, say a sports standpoint, you know, a, a, a great shooter, like someone like a Steph Curry, his, his, when he puts that ball up in mind, he has, he sees it growing through, the, going through the net. Yeah. But if it doesn't go through, he's not attached to that because he's going to do it again. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So you're not attached to the lack of success or worried about the failure. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the key. Don't be a, so attached to it. Like, oh, I didn't meet the, the main speaker, so I must have failed. No. Right. You know, and just having really that outcome. So many other things sales. happen. Yeah. yeah. Don't get attached to whether they buy or not. If they buy, great. Mm -hmm. But don't go jumping up and down, celebrating, dancing all around. <laughs> and if they don't, great. Don't go sulking and crying either. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, the moment Les Brown said he'd be in my show, I'm not kidding. I got up and danced around like a little schoolgirl in my studio here. I had goosebumps. <laughs> well, I, was... I mean, I felt I did the same <laughs> thing when, when Brian Kelly asked me to be on his show, so I understand. Who's that? <laughs> oh, you're talking about the, the head coach of what football team? Yeah, right. That? <laughs> that was good. Oh, that imposter. Who are these people taking my name, man? <laughs> I've, I've literally had people ask, is that you? It's like, have you seen his picture? Come on. You think that's me? Come on. But there was, nothing, there, was the, there was a kid that played for the University of Texas a few years ago, a tight end named Barrick Matthews. I said, if he goes pro, I'm claiming him as my son. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Brian Kelly, that, that's my my brother. The one that's, uh, he was Notre Dame forever. I forgot where he's, he's at. He's at uh, LSU now. Oh, okay. That's good. That's a good place. But yeah, I don't like Googling my name because I never see myself. It's always this guy. <laughs> no, yeah. People would say, go Google yourself. I was like, no, I'm not going to. I'm tired of doing that. It's too depressing. Um, <laughs> so, you need to go to LSU's media department. You may be able to take over there, and then you can be <laughs> interview him. Oh, man. I, yeah, I met a guy in the airport. We had the same exact first and last name, and we were the same age. Oh, wow. We were both waiting for food, uh, and a, you know, it was a, a, what do you know, a connection flight. So we're in the airport, and they called out, and two of us went up, and I'm looking at him. I go, this is weird. I said, what's in it? It's like, wow, that's not mine. Is your name Brian Kelly? He's like, yeah. I'm like, no. So I took a picture. <laughs> that's cool. It was very cool. It was like, that, that's just rare. Um, so we've met, you and I have met so many different people uh, in our lives that have been, you know, key to our development. Um, some are just you know, that we look at and go, wow, I'm so glad that I met and learned from that individual because it has really helped me for you. If you can think of one person that would bubble up all the way to the top, not leave, not, it doesn't matter if uh, you're leaving people out because you love everybody you come in contact with. But if one gave you some bit of inspiration that really catapulted you, uh, that really sticks out in your mind, who would that be? Who was your greatest inspiration to date? Wow. 
And, and that's, that's a kind of a toss up, but I'm going to have to go back to the lady I told you about who, when I was in network marketing, Peggy Hightower, wow. because she, she's like a, another mother to me. And uh, she, she's very close to me she, to this day. We're still very close. And uh, it, w- it was funny because when I, I, w- I got a, a postcard in the mail with her name on it and I didn't know who she was. But I saw the last name and I said, oh, I went to college with the girl by the last name. Her last name by that time was Disc. And I went into the office and it was her daughter who I went to college with in her office. And I'm like, okay. So there was a familiarity there. But then I went into the office and talked to Peggy. And she did something that I, I'd never forgot. She asked me, what do I see myself do, doing in a few years? I said, I want to move to Atlanta. Didn't know why, but I said I want to move to Atlanta. And what she did at that point, she used to introduce me to people who were successful. And she'd say, hey, Brian, this is Barrett. He's going to open up one of our offices in Atlanta. She would sell me on my dream and, wow. and, and, until it happened. I ended up moving to Atlanta. And she would, she would always do that. And she would always make sure she only introduced me to people that were producing. Wow. And she, she made it a point to, to do that, to make sure that you are always surrounding yourself with people who are doing something, because she always said the other people can't offer you anything. <laughs> so that's powerful yeah wow that yeah she 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 was a, a tough lady and she 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 made sure that we focused on putting the work and she used to always talk about um her to talk about the garden of eden one time she said which came first the the fall of eden or god telling adam to work and people would answer they go well the fall of eden and then god punished them and she said no god told adam to work first Working was not a punishment. It was a gift. And most of us, this was so powerful. She said, mm-hmm. most of us spend our lives trying to run away from the gift. <laughs> and then we wonder why we're broke. <laughs> <laughs> well, not just financially, but also emotionally. Exactly. That's true. We spend our lives, oh, I just don't want to work. I don't want to. That's, that was the gift to work. I'll, I'll never forget ever a pastor saying that, I do. I have not found the word retirement anywhere. In the it's Bible. not. It's not anywhere. It's. You're right. I said that to someone recently. Yeah. The retirement. Is, we're supposed to serve until I, we leave here. Yeah, and that, that's what I tell people. I said retirement isn't a word in my vocabulary. Maybe a, a, <laughs> a shift or a change from one vocation to another, but it's not quitting working, and it's not quitting serving others. And I always say, as long as my heart's beating and I'm capable of doing it. I want to continue to serve the, people. The, my last the, breath. the late great musician, uh, Dizzy Gillespie, he had a quote that said that someone told him retirement is where you get to do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it and travel the world. He said, well, I've been retired my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. So I, I'm curious about your thought on this is that there is this debate I've seen go on about people promote or uh, teaching those that have not yet found their swim lane yet they're teaching them well be sure that whatever you do choose that you're very very passionate about it cool. uh, and, and it's also very uh it's also advantageous to also be very good at it but i that and i could tell you've heard that this debate has been going on uh, well, what is your what is your comment on that what is your belief on well it, it, it's it's my, my first book um called Why Didn't You Get It Done? I have a chapter called Fruits of Passion where I talked about that. But since I wrote the book, I have changed my perspective. So in the book, I talk about that. Hey, work something that you're passionate about and you won't have to work. But I have realized later that people don't always have success in business on something they're passionate about. You have success on something you're good at. And that's what people are going to pay you for something you're good at, not for something you're passionate about. Now, can they be both? Yes, they can be both, but they're not always the case. So I always tell people, don't feel bad or down on yourself because you're you're working at something you're good at, but you're not passionate about it. Because, hey, I mean, you could be a great accountant. You could be fantastic at accounting and people will pay you a lot of money for it. But you may be passionate about baking. You may love to bake, but you don't feel that you're going to be making the money you can at accounting. So do baking on the side as a hobby. Do ba- you can still have your passion and you can still be productive on something that's going to, that you're good at that's going to pay you money. I mean, everybody can't be 
a LeBron James who is working his passion but happens to be good at it too. Everybody can't can't be that person. It's okay to do both, but and and just be good at something because being good is what's going to pay you. People are going yeah. going to pay you because oh he's passionate about it. Let me give him money. They're not going to do that. <laughs> you have to have some some skill at it. Some be good at it. But I think that you you know you that was my whole thing. My philosophy changed completely. I used to just think that hey if you're passionate about it, just keep doing it because it's going to come through, and that doesn't always work like that. Yeah, I mean I don't think it. It, it certainly doesn't guarantee a successful business, but no, it doesn't. But it can, nothing, <laughs> right? And I say there's nothing wrong with pursuing it and giving it a good old college try. I agree. Saying, like with the accountant, that's a great analogy or a metaphor there. Where well, they love baking, so the accountant could then make all of their clients, their target market, bakers. That's inc- oh, that's great. That's great. Right. So there's a way to pull in what you're passionate about and and. You know, sprinkle that into your business. I mean, uh, like and me, typically I, when someone's good at something, there is some level of passion or they wouldn't be good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, because I mean, that's what got them in it in the first place. Right. <clears throat> but it's but they may not. But they may have some a passion that's greater or, or they may not be as passionate as they were before because, you know, they were you know, they, they found something that they just really, really loved. And, and, it was, and it's, it's here's the thing. Sometimes it's. You may have a passion, but it may not be fun. You know, mm. but it's, it, 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 if it's not fun, the, the fun things are what we want to do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's interesting because I, I just went through a transition about um, a little over a year ago, maybe two. I'll lose track of time now. But I used to be a certified personal trainer. I did online fitness and all this before COVID. And of course, I stopped that business. And then COVID hit and it became the rage. Of course, but that's okay. I don't feel any remorse at all. I I did like it. I was passionate about it. And then I found out I was more passionate about something else. Yeah. And yeah. and then I, I could feel little bits of me not feeling 100% fulfilled, but I didn't know any better when I was right. a certified personal trainer. And then when I began doing what I'm doing now, I'm like, I love getting up. I love firing up the computer. I love getting into my automations. I love developing. I love talking to people, building my team. I'm so happy now. I cannot. And you're having fun. Oh, I'm having a blast. And I don't know what I get to do. But it didn't come to me. Yes, I'm, you know, came to me at the age of what, 55, 56, something like that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I feel fortunate that it came. Period. Exactly. Exactly. Not, not looking back on, oh, boo hoo. I wish you would have got here sooner. Oh, my God. I just looked. We got two minutes. Come on. That can't be right. Come, you, you've known how our other conversations go when we're not on here. So, yeah, that is right. You know how we do. <laughs> It's so true. Oh, goodness. So we do have a few things uh, I wanted to take care of. We do. I do like to end every show with one very special question. Uh, it became a very um, intriguing question, kind of by osmosis. I would ask it on occasion back in the first year or so of the show. This is three plus now years. Okay. And I started started paying attention. Well, I'm always paying attention, but I started realizing, my gosh, these answers are pretty. These are pretty profound. I'm going to just end every show with that. No pressure. No, no pressure. No, no. And there's no buildup of any kind. No. <laughs> no, not whatsoever. But before we jump into that, we got a couple of things. So a uh, little birdie told me that would be Dr. Barrett Matthews. Uh, they also have a gift for you all. Yeah. That amazing guy right there. And uh, so we're going to give away two gifts and then we're going to come back with that big question. So don't go anywhere. Gift number one is. For every one of you that has stayed with us live to the end, this is it. This is the time. You want to get out your pen, paper, whatever you write with, type it on a notepad. Don't go there yet. I'm going to give you the URL, the web address to go to enter to win a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. I mean, you get to choose from places all over the world. There are so many to choose from. It's awesome. You definitely want to enter this. Okay, so you ready? Be ready and write this down. I'm going to put it on the screen for those of you watching live. You want to write down RYP dot i m forward slash vacation ryp dot i m forward slash vacation and write that down enter you don't have to enter while we're still on uh live on the show um we will be monitoring for entries for a good hour or two after the show is over so don't sweat that just do it right when we sign off though be sure to get it in there you do not want to miss that i tell you and now we have another amazing gift by none other than the man himself dr Barrett Matthews, I'm going to pull that up, put it on the screen, and let you take it away and let people know what this wonderful thing is all about. Well, what I have done is I compiled a 
training course. I put a training course together because I get a lot of people saying that they got clients, they want they want clients, but they want clients that are going to pay them because they get tire kickers all the time. So what I've done is I put together a, a training class here to help you to get clients that are going to pay you. Well, how do you do that? How do you get it? You just go to www. Five, the number five, five ways to paying clients.com. Five ways to paying clients.com. You're going to find out what you're doing wrong and what you can do right to help you to get those clients. There you go. Five ways to paying clients.com. And the number five, I can tell you've done a podcast or two in your, your day by repeating the oh, URL. Too. I just love it when I have a <laughs> polished guest on. It's like freaking awesome. And uh, you're just a joy to, to hang out with. And we still got that one question, though. I didn't forget. So I'm not <laughs> going to not gonna happen. So one more time, that, that web address is www. the number five, and then words following, five ways to pain clients.com. So don't forget to go there and grab your complimentary training video and do it right after the show's over. So write that down. I hope you wrote that down. I'm going to take it off the screen now because we got that incredible wonderful powerful intense question coming up just all this is to make dr barrett matthews sweat but he's not sweating he's cool as a cucumber you're welcome mary yes so this question there's so many great things about it but here's one that will really help is that there is no such thing as a wrong answer it doesn't exist you cannot fail yeah. in fact the exact opposite is the case the only correct answer is yours it's okay. going to be unique to you. And if it takes you an instant, a microsecond, or if it takes you 30 seconds to a minute to come up with an answer, that's perfectly fine too, because it's your answer. So with all that wonderful buildup, are you that's ready? a heck of a buildup. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Barrett Matthews. How do you define success? I su su uh, define success as a journey, as a, a journey of accomplishments that build, that teach, that empower, that strengthen, that help you get goal after goal after goal after goal and on to infinity because I don't think success is a destination it's still a journey you just keep going but keep accomplishing goals and learning from each one that's success to me oh and you know what that calls for <laughs> duck that's right dr barrett matthews dropping smart bombs bombs of wisdom i mean unbelievable unbelievable great stuff i mean this is a man Thank who has you. succeeded in, in great ways. And what you want to do as a, as a viewer, as a listener is I hope you took a lot of notes. I did myself. I don't do, I don't ask anybody to do anything. I don't do. I'm writing notes during the show. You have a great and, audience, by the way. They are phenomenal. And I love them. Yes. And it's because of people like you, honestly, that come on, you're, you're attracting the right people, the, the beautiful people that are out there that really are hungry and want to learn and take their, life and their business to the next level and that's what i want to import upon everyone is all you have to do is model success it's a fancy word for copy we were told not to do it in elementary school then we become parents and that's the absolute way to become successful is to copy you're just you're just doing it with integrity we're not doing it to cheat <laughs> right, right right and so copy this guy everything you heard tonight i hope you put the notes or wrote down yeah, the notes if not you can watch you can listen we're everywhere you cannot not find us and now you'll will be able to not not find Dr. Barrett Matthews as well. <laughs> and I have a feeling you already couldn't not find him. You're <laughs> un unfindable. <laughs> That's right. You're un unfindable. That's it. <laughs> all right. With that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming and watching and engaging. I hope you, if you didn't see this live, remember the mindbodybusinessshow.com. Register. We'll just send you announcements of updates of the moment we go live. Nothing for sale. And you can come on and engage with us and have a good time. And we'll give you some shout outs, put your name in lights and get you some exposure as well. That's what it's all about. It's about sharing the wealth. Speaking of wealth, Dr. Barrett Matthews is one man of wealth, wisdom and experience. And I am truly blessed to call him my friend. So thank you, sir, for coming on. Thanks for having me, man. It's all always a pleasure. 
Ah, uh, and we got to keep this this gravy chain rolling, baby. Yeah, we do. Awesome. On behalf of the amazing Dr. Barrett Matthews, blah, 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 there I go now. On behalf of the amazing Dr. Barrett Matthews, <laughs> slow down, Brian. I'm your host, Brian Kelly, of the Mind Body Business Show. Until next time, everyone, please do two things. One, go out and serve and make a difference in someone else's life. And number two, above all, please be blessed. Take care, all. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com. My name is Brian Kelly.